Good morning, Flosstube. My first experience with doing a video was obviously much too easy. Now that I have Windows 10, I've been trying for two days to figure out how to get this to work. Windows Movie Maker and Windows 10 do not get along at all. Um, so I'm now trying an app called Camera, and we'll see what happens. But I can sympathize with all the people who have said how much trouble they've had recording and getting their videos up, because now I've experienced that. Anyway, I am back to give you an update. I have never quite told you who I was, but I can tell you that I hope someday to have the channel name Dreaming Stitcher. That's my plan. Uh, as I understand it, if I get enough subscribers, that can happen. So thank you very much to all the subscribers I have already. And uh, Maybe I've misunderstood, but the only ways I've seen for changing channel names I had to do with things like doing it through Google Plus, and I don't use Google Plus because I told you I'm not a social media person. Uh, I'll just wait and see what happens if I ever get enough subscribers. But if you want to think of a name for me, please think of Dreaming Stitcher, and, and someday I'll explain what that means, maybe even today. This video is not going to be one of my works in progress. Instead, it was meant to be a short clip to see whether I can successfully upload a video. As I said, I've been trying for two days to do that. And the topic of this one is going to be the influence that Flosstube has had on me in the few months that I've been watching. If this video is successful, I plan to do a works in progress video tomorrow, which would be the third Sunday of August, because I did my first one on the third Sunday of July, so it kind of makes sense to me to do it once a month in that manner. Um, so how have I been influenced by Flosstube? in a number of different ways. Most of what I have to show you will relate to purchases that be came out because of Flosstube, but there have been other influences as well. And I want to start by clearing up a misconception I may have left about influence on my actual uh, design or changes in patterns. Last time that I came to you, I showed you that I had this kit, which was from Artiste and had a little bird, and I was interested in it but didn't like one part of the design, namely the eye on the bird. And I kind of said that seeing everybody change things in floss tube motivated me to go ahead and make that change. And in a sense it did, but it was such a minor change that I can't really say that floss tube was the only source of influence responsible for that, because I have changed things before. I did say that I had changed colors before. For example, one of my early projects that I did was uh, Santa Claus to be given as a gift, and the person who was to receive it likes blue Santa Clauses. So I changed the red Santa Claus to a blue Santa Claus by changing all the shades of red into shades of blue. And I've made other small color changes in the past too, but very few design changes. I think that Flosstube has influenced me maybe to be a little bolder about design things. But for example, I changed the colors in this little Christmas ornament to make it look more like a cat that my parents had, because this was to be a gift for them. And their cat was sort of a pastel tortoiseshell, which is a tortoiseshell that's not black and orange, but rather uh, sort of gray and peach. So I didn't get an orange that's really as light as she was, but I put little blotches of gray here and there, like in the ear and the tail and stuff, just to suggest their kitty. You can probably barely see those, but those were minor changes I made. I also had changed this little dog so that its spots looked more like their dog. They had a very crooked little dog, very much like this. But I will say that Floss Tube has influenced me in the sense that I think now I would be bolder about changing the things that didn't look like their little dog, such as his ear, which is much bigger than hers. I think um, at the time I was afraid to change it because it was part of the shape of the dog. I think I'd go ahead and do it now and see if I could make it look more like her little ears. And I think Flosstube probably is a little responsible for that kind of confidence. Another way that Flosstube has influenced me is in getting me to select linen for the trilobite uh, design that I did for Father's Day. Not that I haven't stitched on linen before, I have, but it always was linen that came in kits. I never deliberately went out and sought linen as I did after seeing, I believe I told you, a remnant that I realized was actually practically a combination of a stitching linen, and so I went and looked to see if they had 100% linen, and they did, and I waved a big batch of it at you, such as this, and after seeing all the linen users on Flosstube, I didn't hesitate for a moment to go ahead and try it out for my trilobite design, because I 
want it to use it in the future for another pattern. I'm going to show you that's a sampler because it's more appropriate to samplers. Uh, also, you might have influenced me, maybe, I'm not sure on this one, in being a little bolder in working on my own designs. I am going to try to do another trilobite, but this one isn't from a free chart online. I have this book on trilobites, which is a very good book, by the way. This gentleman has done a number of uh, more academic books on trilobites that I don't have because it's a bit beyond me, but this is sort of his trilobites for lay people. And I just want to show you that the free patterns had trilobites such as fake hops that I went ahead and did that looks nothing like the trilobite I want to do now. The trilobite I want to do now, and I did have the bookmarks in earlier, but they kind of got taken out after several false starts on recording this video. My apologies. But the one I would like to do is Elrathia king eye because I have a family member that we associate with that particular trilobite. Lots of glare, sorry. But there's an Elrathia. And you can see he sort of has double rows of uh, these body parts, which I'm temporarily drawing a blank on in his head. It's a very distinct shape and design. Whereas the other trilobites in the patterns were definitely different trilobites. They didn't look like him. I want to find one of them just in case you might recognize it. As I said, fake ops was one, and I should have remembered what picture number it was. There we go. Here's one that looks nothing like Arathia, the fake ops over there on the <laughs> that page. Um, not where my hand is, the other page is one of the designs, and he doesn't look like Arathia at all. But because of Floss Tube, I feel like you design your own things, and there were those beautiful free patterns, and I know she doesn't object to people adapting them because other folks have made trilobites from hers. I want to try to do an Elrathia. And I think, at least in a small way, Floss Tube helped to inspire me to do that. Uh, on the other hand, I do want to digress for a moment to say something about the whole linen versus Aida uh, snobbery that goes on. Maybe it isn't always snobbery on some people's part, but people seem to feel obliged to apologize for using Aida. And sometimes I think they misunderstand it. I saw a very amusing video from a floss tuber who was doing the new trendy and very entertaining thing of interviewing her significant other, in this case her husband, about what he knew about floss tube terms. And the first one I saw to do it was Dan Kai. I enjoyed that very much. This was another floss tuber. But in the course of her video, she tried to explain what Aida was. And she said that it was sort of a beginner's fabric for like little 12 year old girls and people that are just starting to stitch. And that isn't true at all. Um, in fact, little girls in the old days were stitching on linen. They were doing things like one over one tent stitch on 56 count linen when they were seven years old. I mean, linen was what was available, it was what they used. And there was nothing um, in Aida that is especially for beginners. Instead, it is a fabric that came about in the mid-19th century, I believe. Uh, in fact, it had another name originally that I forget. I don't know that much about it, but I have read a little bit. And Aida was a name change from what it was originally called, and the era in which it came about, now some of this is uh, inferences and pieces I've put together, not necessarily stated as such in the books, was in the, the mid-19th century when needle arts were becoming more available to everyone. In fact, the book I had called Plain and Fancy that was very interesting made it the point that anyone had to learn to sew as plain sewing, but fancy work was really reserved for people who had the leisure time to do it. Not that leisure meant the same thing then as it does now. They still worked awfully hard. But you had to be a woman who could afford the supplies, the expensive silks, sometimes things that were imported, and had the time on her hands to do beautiful hand embroidery. When it came to children, they often had to be sent away to schools that specialized in teaching needlework. When you see a book uh, such as this one that says things like patterns of childhood and refers to schoolgirl samplers and things, it's because they had to be taught and it was they actually had lessons on how to do it for various reasons. And that's when I said they were stitching on things like uh, linen at that time. But with the advent of the industrial age, more people in the expansion of the middle class, needlework became open to more people, and they had things like Berlin woolwork that had pre-designed patterns people could follow instead of having to sort of share patterns out. You could get them in the, the latest ladies' magazines or whatever, and they had pre-printed canvases. 
and suddenly the whole gamut of needle art was open to more people. And that was about the time that Aida came out, and I think it was a way of helping to expand our craft that we really ought to appreciate more. If it weren't for Aida, it might still be a specialized thing. Now anyone can stitch. It's not so much that it's for beginners, it's that it was for people who had some time on their hands, but not as much as it takes to do some of the more involved projects, I guess. And uh, one of the complaints people have about Aida is that it's so stiff. That was done on purpose so that it could be stitched in hand. And in fact, I do small pieces, like the robin's nest, I'm stitching in hand. And I saw another floss tuber. I'm sorry, I should have looked up her name this morning. She's a Chinese-American floss tuber who gets to visit relatives in China for part of the year and leaves her really big projects there when they're framed. But she was doing an amazingly beautiful and extremely large design with Chinese dancers that was pre-printed on large count Aida. And she would just roll the entire bundle of Aida into her hand and stitch in hand. It's meant to do that, and it's meant to make commercially available patterns uh, more prominent for people. And I think Aida is a really good thing, and it's not just for beginners. I think it helped to sort of democratize and spread the whole craft of cross stitch. Because when they were stitching solely on linen, yes, they absolutely used cross stitch, but a number of other specialty stitches as well, as I'm sure you realize and including, as I said, tent stitch for, for more embroidered type pieces and such. But I don't think we'd have the cross stitch we have now if they hadn't had Aida to popularize it and to spread it and to make it easier for people who were not at the highest levels of skill, for people who could not send their child to a school specifically to learn needlework. Instead, it became a craft that was available for anyone that was really easy to learn and easy to do. And I think Aida should be appreciated for that instead of some folks. So I, I use the word snobbery, and I don't know that it's snobbery, but I see so many floss tubers apologizing for not using linen or not moving on from Aida. And I don't think any apologies are necessary. I think our community is as large as it is because we have fabrics like that. So yes, you influenced me to go out specifically to get linen for my trilobites with the sampler I want to do in mind. But I make no apologize for the fact that many of my projects are Aida, and I see nothing against it. Um, so please, just take that in the positive sense that it's meant. But thank you for influencing me with my trilobites, because they turned out really well. I like them on that fabric. Okay, my notes say that I... Oh, I did have one more thing to say about samplers, just because I got this book out. Um, there's a beautiful design some of you are doing. I think it's called Rose Crowns, something like that, and it may be ink circles. I'm sorry, I didn't look it up. But one of the books definitely mentioned that the embroidery of little crowns and things was done, and I couldn't find the right page in the right book, but this one does show some. There's a little row of crowns up here. And this was not, this was a time when maybe you weren't sent away to school to learn to, to stitch as you would have been in the United States. But girls perhaps from uh, less fortunate circumstances who might be in orphan homes or founding homes or things that were taken in, they were taught skills that they could use for employment. And the whole marking of linens with alphabets is what led to all those alphabets and samplers. Was so you would be able to stitch the letters for like the linens you would have when you married. But stitching these things is so you could get work in an aristocratic household and you could demonstrate that you would be able to mark the linens. And they say here below is the row of crowns in practice for sewing monograms on household linen. So that's why they did those kinds of things, so that they could sort of apply for a job and say, here is my needlework, and I am able to stitch these things, and you can put me to work sewing on household linens for you. Anyway, that was just a more digression, sorry. Back to influences of floss tube. Thank you for influencing me in a lot of very positive ways. I've tried this so many times that I don't know if I mentioned in this version of it why I'm using the word influence instead of the word enabling. I don't think I did. But enabling has both, both positive and negative connotations. Enabling can be a very good thing, being enabled to do something very positive. It can also be very negative. And I'm aware that we may have people who watch floss tube who have tendencies. I have some. Fortunately, it's not enough for clinical diagnosis or the need for intervention towards uh, compulsive spending or hoarding tendencies. 
and I don't want to make light of anyone in that situation, so that's why I'm keeping it positive and saying influences rather than enabling, because enabling can be taken in humor. I understand that you mean well, but it, it actually can be a damaging thing for some people. So influences of floss too. Um, specific patterns and kits that I have been led to buy simply because of floss tube, or not simply, but partially. This was one of them. I told you when I showed it to you before that I had already been considering it, and it was now marked down in price, and it was a subject I liked, although I didn't like the eye on the bird and so on. But the tipping point, not the catalyst that caused the reaction, but the thing that tipped me over into buying it was seeing she's crafting and working on it. And the next thing I knew, I was hopping in the car and driving into town five miles to where the store is with the sole purpose of seeing if they still had this on clearance and getting it and starting it. And I'm enjoying it. I like the colors. It's turning out much nicer, like so many kids do, than you expect from the picture. In fact, the colors in the picture don't even really match it that well. And I'm happy I got it, and I'm happy that She's Crafting was stitching it to influence me to hop in the car that day, even though I had many other factors that were pushing me towards it as well. And I will name names where I'm able to and try to give them credit where it's due. And so thank you for that. The next thing that I also showed you that I was influenced to buy as a specific pattern was the Dutch Beauty. And I did look that one up to see who it was. It was, in fact, Tracy P. that influenced me. I'm not saying in any case that these are the first people on Floss Tube that ever did these patterns. These are the ones that I saw. And her problem with it was being able to get fabric that was large enough, but she held it up and I thought, my goodness, that is really a lovely sampler. And I found myself looking online, by the way, it was a stash video she was doing, I think it was number 23, if you're interested in seeing, she was going through her stash and picking out things she would keep or give away and so on. But she showed it and I immediately started looking for it in places online just to see if it was available, where it was available. And the first place I looked was eBay, and it was there, but I, for personal reasons of my own, have hidden away my eBay password and have not used it in quite a long time and don't intend to because eBay was not good for me. And I don't want to go there. <laughs> but I do look there sometimes to see what's out and if things are in print, and that was not uh, the place I could go to get it. So I kept looking, and here's where I've already named She's Crafted in Tracy P as influences, but this is on a whole bunch of you. I am a very conservative person when it comes to e-commerce. I don't go to sites I don't know. I don't shop in strange places. I have to have some confidence there, and I try to limit myself to a very few sellers so that my financial information is not all over the web. But you kept naming a particular place that on my own I had seen, but I wouldn't have gone to because I didn't know enough about them. But every time any one of you floss tubers that I have watched uttered the words, one, two, three, stitch, you were influencing me. So I finally went there to look for that beautiful pattern that Tracy P had held up, and yes, they had it. But I'm bringing this up because had you not said one, two, three, stitch so many times, I would not have gone there, and I would not have seen other things. Now some of what I've ended up buying from them, I would have bought anyway. I was already seeking out, for example, from used sellers on Amazon and such, and was very happy to see that they actually had it new at 123 Stitch, and I got some patterns that way that I would have gotten regardless. But I also got patterns that I sought out specifically because of floss tube and patterns that I simply wouldn't have seen without you. So I want to show up a batch of patterns that I would not have gotten if I had not gone to 123 Stitch, and I would not have gone to 1323 Stitch if you guys hadn't said something about it. Now I've seen these before. I have a stack of tribal patterns. Oops, don't want to show the patterns. Some of these really are just the patterns, so I'm going to take those out so I can sort of fan out and show you the ones that are not pure pattern. Uh, I think I got like seven and five of them are for gifts. But the first one was one I really wanted as a gift. I've been looking for a long time for a rhinoceros. And I got the rhino, the octopus, crab, goldfish, a cat. I had seen 
a floss tuber doing a tribal wine glass from the same company, and it was very pretty, but I'm not interested in wine glasses. I would never have any desire to stitch it. And after I bought these, I saw someone who had the cat on their wall. I was trying to figure out who it was so I could give her credit. It was beautiful. I thought, that's the cat I bought to make for so-and-so. But other tribal patterns that I had seen, I wasn't interested in. I am interested, for example, in manatees. And they're the only manatee pattern or kit that I've seen that I would really like to do was from a company I don't know called Orcraphics, I believe it's pronounced, I could be wrong about that, in Europe. And I don't know them, I'm not going to shop there, and it's kind of expensive, and I don't want the Euro conversion and everything else. But I had seen a tribal manatee. I don't like the tribal manatee. It just doesn't appeal to me, even though I like manatees. So the tribal wine glass and the tribal manatee didn't do it. But all those people saying one, two, three stitch got me to where these patterns were available and got me to see them, and suddenly I realized that there were ones I did like. I think that octopus is just awesome. Um, I went specifically because of the rhino. There's someone I want to do the rhino for as a gift. I've been looking for realistic patterns of rhinos. I bought way too many chart books um, on the possibility that they would have a good rhino in it that I liked. And they had fine rhinos in at least two cases. There were some actual rhinoceroses, I think, but I didn't care for them. And then I saw this one, which is the farthest thing from what I usually do. It's not realistic, but it was gorgeous. And I think the recipient will like it. I'm going to do it in different colors. You'll be seeing it soon. It, along with the trilobite, are one of the two things I want to start as holiday gifts. But yeah, all you one, two, three stitchers, you did this to me. I would not have picked these out without you. While I was shopping there, I not only got the beautiful Dutch beauty and those patterns there, but a couple others I need to give credit for. One of which... I tried this morning to find who it was. I could not. I know I saw a stitcher on floss tube. I think it was one of the male stitchers. I was eliminating possibilities this morning. It wasn't Brian Litton. It wasn't Stitchy Ryan. It wasn't Coffee Stitcher. It wasn't David Tucker and his brother or brother-in-law. It wasn't Bearded Stitcher. It wasn't the male half of the crafty couple. I don't know. I was trying all over. I don't know who it was. I'm sorry. But he was doing one of the patterns from this. I believe it was a he. If I'm wrong and you're a she, forgive me because I really can't remember who showed it. But I love ducks. I used to have ducks. I think I said that when I talked about the bird's eye that I didn't like, that I had 17 ducks at one point. And they held up this book as being where they were doing their duck from, and I immediately I wanted to look for that. And it came from 123Stitch. So whoever you are, thank you. You influenced me to buy this. I think the ducks are beautiful. It's from Stony Creek, wrapped in feathers. And I would definitely want to do those someday. And you influenced me to buy those. It was you, you, you. Another one that I can't name the influence for, because so many of you have done it. And I tried to take some of these out of their packaging, so it wouldn't be an issue. Was, yeah, this one. This, get cracking, ink circles. This is really not my style. I said I don't often regret purchases, or I meant to say it if I didn't. I don't know that I'll ever do this, but it was so wonderfully weird. I know Coffee Stitcher is doing this, and I'm sure other people are, and I don't remember who I first saw it with. I'm not even sure if I saw them doing the design, or they simply mentioned doing it, saying something like, get Kraken, Kraken with a K. You know, something got me to go looking for this. And it's just such a peculiar little piece. I have an interest in Krakens. I won't even go any further than that. You know, I like trial bites. I like weird things. I like manatees. My tastes are a little peculiar. But, yeah, whoever you were, I wouldn't have bought this without you. <laughs> so, thank you for the positive influence that made me go buy Get Kraken. Get Kraken, sorry. I don't know when or if I'll make that, but you made it happen. Okay, who else influenced me? Here we go. Morgan and Marilla Shaw. I enjoy watching yours, your little Friday finishes, and your sun stash Sundays, and your works in progress. And this one's on Marilla. Marilla, you did this to me. I went out and looked for this, and of course you can never buy just one thing, so I bought a bunch of kits because of this. And there will be glare because he's in his package. But she showed her finish of this tiger. Now, there are tons of tiger patterns and kits out there. I've seen many over the years. They never interested me enough to buy one. I probably wouldn't have bought this seeing it in a store either. It was the time she spent with her camera lovingly lingering on her finished 
piece, because this was one of her finishes, that got me. It was so beautiful. The water, the stitching, the whole thing. These things are always just so much more amazing in person than they are in the packaging. And I went looking deliberately for this. And different things push me, I mean, especially when you have compulsive spending tendencies to buy things, sometimes it's a concern that they're going to go out of print. When I see a design that I'm interested in and there are already Chinese imitations, for example, available under a different name, I feel like I have to get that soon <laughs> because it must be disappearing if they've already got a hold of it. So, Marilla, that one's on you. I think I might have seen an imitation design or something, but I was just worried about it becoming unavailable, so I got it. And next, we have... Oh, by the way, I didn't bring any to show you, but I gave credit to all the people who ever said 1-2-3-stitch. I don't want others to feel left out. I also put in a big order at so-and-so. Nothing specific that I had seen anyone doing, but that's the one of the UK sites. And I went ahead and went through the currency conversion and everything. It was just before Brexit, by the way, so I don't know if that would have changed the prices later. It was like the week that Brexit was about done. But I spent way too much there, but I got so many beautiful kits from them. So, you English people who might have dropped the word so-and-so, you did that to me. Anyway, I'm just throwing that out there. Crafty X Stitcher. Okay, Crafty X Stitcher was the one who drove me to get these. And I did not get them from 123Stitch, I did not get them from so-and-so, I did not get them from my usual sources through Amazon because they didn't have them. But she was stitching these and they were just so beautiful. Uh, where did I get these? Uh, I think it was Walmart, but not at Walmart. It was through their website. And she was doing the blackberries and the strawberries, and when she was stitching them up, they were just so amazingly lovely that I immediately, that happens sometimes when I watch FlossTube videos, I immediately went online to see if it was available, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes the things people show are out of print, which is actually good for me because then I can't buy them. Sometimes they stick in my head for a while, like the Dutch Beauty with Tracy P, and I keep coming back to look. And I came back to look for these, and I was happy to find them through a seller um, that was making Walmart their intermediary. And they really are lovely. I'm not that wild about the little wooden bell pull hardware for them, but it's hard to get bell pull hardware. You can kind of see that at the top of the design. I can't get my fingers in the right place, sorry. <laughs> I'm not camera uh, savvy, but that will be all right. They just look sort of like unfinished wood to me. I'm not excited about them, but thank you Crafty X Stitcher. I think those are amazingly beautiful, and I also enjoyed one of your later videos where you told us a lot about yourself. It was very interesting. I wish you well in your continued recovery from the accident that you had had. I think you're doing very well. And I love watching your videos, and thank you for influencing me to buy those. Now, the final influence, I think, on my list... Well, actually, I have one more. I was going to address my channel name in a moment. But maybe I better do that now before I show you my final bit of stash that was influenced. I've talked to you about how I feel a little bolder in making changes to patterns because of floss tube, and how I was... It occurred to me to actually go out and get linen to kit something up instead of just waiting till I had a kit with linen in it. I actually thought, yeah, you can look for this and, and do it yourself. You don't have to um, just always stitch on Aida. Um, I've talked about how you've influenced me to go to certain shopping sites because of the good things you all have to say about them. I've been showing you some specific patterns and kits, but I want to say something about the name Dreaming Stitcher. That one is on Kay's Cross Stitch. I originally thought that my name would be something much more prosaic, something like Read Game Stitch, because that's how I spend my time. But she was giving an anecdote in one of her videos about how she'd gone to a stitching store with friends, and I think her, if I recall right, her friend was a quilter and was trying to decide whether or not she should buy a particular quilt pattern. And the lovely lady of Kay's Cross Stitch, who's real name I forget, although it may be Kay, um, said to her, buy the pattern, buy the dream. And in fact, Kay's Cross Stitch has been showing us a design that I believe she 
it herself that says, buy the pattern, buy the dream. And in a way, that's what we're all doing when we overstash. Um, we are dreaming that somehow we will get to make these beautiful things. There are so many, so many of us have more than we could ever do in a lifetime or three lifetimes. But we're living the dream. We buy it with the, not so much the belief, but the hope. The dream that we will get it done, that it will happen. And in a way, especially when you're not as young as some of you philosophers, the act of buying it is also uh, another, I guess I could have called myself delusional stitcher, another way of challenging reality in defying death itself. Because mortality is out there waiting for all of us. And when you engage in an act of defiance, it isn't always successful. But every time you buy a pattern to add to your stash, you're saying, take that death. I'm going to hope that I get this one done before you catch up with me. I am not going to stop living and stop dreaming and stop getting patterns and stop hoping to make this beautiful thing come to life just because I know you're waiting at the end of the road. And so Dreaming Stitcher is my name because of what was said in Kate Cross Stitch about buying the pattern and buying the dream because I am dreaming that I might get all these wonderful, beautiful things done. And the, the stuff I've showed you is just a small piece of all I've been buying lately. I would have said last January that I had enough stash to last me a lifetime or well over already, but in part definitely because of floss tube. I have gone out there and gotten more. Another influence you've had is in increasing my number of whips, but I think I'll talk about that tomorrow if this is a successful video and about how you have uh, influenced me towards more whips, but I'm not going to do them all. I'll talk about that tomorrow. But I want, want to show one more influence, and this one I'm going to lay on Carolyn Masio, again, forgive me if I can't pronounce properly, and Stitchy Ryan, because both of them showed patterns from this company, and I had some before. I last or first purchased from them in 2012, and they are an Austra Australian company who I'm really happy to see are starting to have their designs available more widely. The designer is Tarina Clark, and her company is Artisee which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. Stitchy Ryan wasn't sure if it was Artsy or Artisy. I always thought Artisy, and I think Carolyn Mazio said that. I was looking at her videos. Uh, she had at least two showing 25 years of her finishes, and sometimes she only had photographs to show because she'd given the things as gifts. Sometimes she had the actual um, projects, and many of them were just absolutely amazing. They were all beautifully done, of course. Some of them were just more astounding than others. And she showed one from Artisee that was a pair of tropical birds. It may have been macaws. I can't remember now, but they were gorgeous. And I was already familiar with Artisee's patterns because I did go buy, uh, buy a couple, as I said, in 2012. But more recently, I recalled that it was very expensive for me to get those. And I meant to keep showing you things instead of just talking the whole time. But I kind of have to say this before I start waving patterns around. I don't have a color printer and I'm not really into PDF files so when I purchased from Artisee I didn't buy the cheapest version I bought the you have to print it out and mail it version plus it was shipping so the two I got back in 2012 I think cost me something like $36 altogether which to me seemed very high just for charts but they're amazing charts I don't regret them just not something I would buy every day but because of Carolyn showing her beautiful tropical birds in that finish video and because of Stitchy Ryan mentioning that he had been to the site I started thinking about it more and I had been avoiding them because of the expense I actually got an Orenko chart that was of an old Japanese print that actually is available through Artisee and the Artisee I'm, I know I could have had confidence in because one thing about Artisee is when you look at the uh, image online that's what you get the Artisee chart I'm doing as I think I told you, they have no finished version. You don't know, I mean, or Orenko chart that I'm doing. You can't tell what it's going to look like. At Artisee, you know exactly what it's going to look like. They even have galleries posted there. So the Orenko chart, I know, I don't know what it's going to look like. If I'd gone with Artisee, I know I would have had a beautiful design. I'm going to have to wait and see on that particular Japanese pattern when I get to it. But I ordered a bunch from Artisee. And three of them were minis, and this is my least favorite of the minis. She had a full size, I should have got the full size. The reason this one's my least favorite is because he's so pixelated. 
but what I did when I went there was I just went through all the categories she has, he's still lovely, and looked for things that I thought I would like because I wanted to get enough to get the free shipping, which I did. I bought so much. I really did. I bought a ton. If you go there, you'll have some idea how much I had to spend to get free shipping. But I got a stack of them, and I like every one of them, and I may not be able to take every one of them out of the glare plastic for you, but let's see what happens. There's another mini, mini flamingo, and he's a little pixelated too, and she has full versions, by the way, of all the minis, but I don't mind that he's pixelated. I think it works fine with the flamingo. I think he's beautiful. Thank you, Stitchy Ryan and Carolyn, for making me go back there again with your mentions of Odyssey. This one would be done as a gift for someone who loves pugs. He's also a mini, but he's absolutely adorable. He reminds me of my Neff Pug who has passed away now, but was a ring bearer at my brother's wedding. He wasn't a black pug, actually, but different pugs have different faces. This face is like his face. He was such a sweet little dog. And I got this one because I love goldfish and koi and was looking for a nice koi design, and I think that will be so relaxing and beautiful. Um, by the way, she licenses everything. She has some old classic designs like that one of the deer that I'm pretty sure are probably public domain but she licenses things from current artists, too. And I want you to notice that name Howard Robinson, because I have another one by him that's absolutely nothing like these koi. Just to show you the, the variety that some of these artists have. Um, I have this one. I love dinosaurs. You're going to find that out about me, because I have one kitted up. Not one of these, but another artist design that's dinosaurs. It's one of the ones I got four years ago that is now kitted up, and I'm getting ready to start it soon. Soon being relative, after my holiday gifts are done, I'll start it. But, yeah. And I have this one, and there's our name, Howard Robinson, again. You couldn't get much farther from those koi than this tyrannosaur and the other creatures in the picture here with him. Okay, and I got the Taj Mahal. A lot of designers have done Taj Mahals. I've been on the lookout for one that I really, really like. I don't know if this is the best of them all, but since I was ordering from Artisi and she had this and it really is quite lovely, I decided, that, yeah, you're going to keep looking at Taj Mahal kits and charts until you get one. Go ahead and get that. And that will help you avoid buying any others because you'll say, I have that nice one already. And here are a couple that are landscapes that are quite, quite lovely. This is called Cypress and the Sea. I don't think you can appreciate how pretty it really is there on the camera, but I'm going to enjoy stitching that so much. I don't live anywhere near the ocean. I've barely ever seen the ocean. I've been to Corpus Christi once, and I've been um, along the California coast a couple of times, twice. And I haven't been in the ocean itself, but this one just reminds me it's of what the sea could look like if I were there, and it's so beautiful. And this is more like my part of the world. That's why I got this one. I believe it's from a photograph. But remember again, this is what you get when you stitch. That's what the stitching will look like. And it's absolutely beautiful. And I keep saying that, but I know you're aware of that from companies like Heaven and Earth Designs and such, that what you see is what you will pretty much get. But because Orenko isn't quite like that, I feel obliged to say it. This one, oh, I really, I wasn't expecting to see this at all. And I love it. I've rarely had the chance to see Western art in person. Um, my sister went to, uh, to be a bridesmaid when she was taking me to school with some folks who lived in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, so it was nowhere near my, uh, my university. She was helping drive me out there, but we were sort of a detour, and they were kind enough to take us to a museum in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We were going to see a, an exhibition of Dutch painters of the Golden Age, but it, the uh, standing exhibits, the ones that weren't just traveling exhibits, were Western art. And my sister is an artist, and she loved things. She would show me paintings of things like Remington and Russell and such. And so I've, I've occasionally had the opportunity in person, even besides the Dallas Fort Worth Museum, to see some of these Western art things. But I just love this piece. It makes me think of those. This is my part of the world, and I like those. And the last one that I was influenced by by going to Artisi because of people bringing it up again and my positive past experiences with them and the beautiful work that Tarina Clark does 
This one's the only one that cost more than the rest. The minis actually are less expensive. The full sizes mostly are all the same price. This one was more expensive because it is larger. And it makes me think of two different things. One is Tarzan. And I won't say much about that because I loved the Tarzan books when I was a kid. But now, in retrospect, looking at them, I can see all the flaws in the character of the author. At the time, I could see some of his jingoism and imperialism and um, bias towards say English over Germans and such because of the time in which he was writing but some of his other bad traits like the stereotypes and racism in his books I did not see at the time because I was naive enough to accept that it was just that character so if Jane's maidservant was a total mammy stereotype caricature I just thought that was her character I didn't realize that so many people at the time it was written would have accepted that of course her maidservant was like that because that's what black women are like. Uh, no, they're not, but as a child, like I said, I was naive. I thought, okay, that's just her. I didn't realize he was um, promulgating a stereotype. Or the some of his, Burroughs' depictions of some of the natives as horribly cowardly blacks and things like that. He also had his noble ones. Tarzan's warriors, his Raziri warriors were noble and brave and so on, but they could still be cowardly too at times and it really is a terrible stereotype and so I like the Tarzan books but I have mixed feelings about them now the other thing it reminds me of is a book I have not read which is Swiss Family Robinson and I've seen the Disney movie and I've seen the Disney treehouse at Disneyland but here you go you can see probably why I think of Tarzan and of Swiss Family Robinson look at the amazing treehouse in the background and all those animals you know, Tantor the elephant and all the rest of them and talk about rhinoceroses. That's a gorgeous rhinoceros. And I love giraffes. Those giraffes are great. I love everything in this picture. All of it. I'm sorry if the glare's too much for you, but that is just... Um, and of course, all of these are based on other artwork. Just like Heaven and Earth designs, you could get these things in other mediums. You could get probably posters, prints, puzzles, uh, some of the some of our favorite cross stitch things, some, a lot of the dimensions kits, you can actually get as paint by numbers. I mean, it's not as though cross stitch is the only way to render or to have access to these beautiful designs. So if you feel like you could never take the time to stitch one of these, but you like the artwork, please notice the artists and see if you can get yourself that artwork in some other medium. But I'm looking forward, dreaming, of stitching those someday. I love every one of them. Um, even the little deer that it was a little pixelated for me, they're all gorgeous. And I really owe it to Floss Tube. And I said this would be a short video, and it wasn't. And I still don't even know if I can upload it. But I wanted to give credit where it's due. And Floss Tube, you pushed me towards all those purchases in one way or another. And I'm happy with them. And I think that's a positive thing. And again, that's why I'm not going to say enabling. But thank you. And. If this works well tomorrow, I will do a video on my works in progress, and I will try not to babble on forever. So you all have a wonderful day. I meant to say last time, and I hope to remember to say in future, that I want everyone who sees this to have something beautiful in your day. It doesn't have to be cross-stitch. It can be birds in the sky, a wonderful sunset, a person who acts towards you with kindness, anything. I hope that all of you, every day, have something that's beautiful in your day. So, good luck with that, and I hope to see you tomorrow if this video works. Thank you.